Hey guys, today we are going to talk about a few cards and the price spike they have hit. Pretty much old cards, some more old cards, and yet more old cards. If you have an older collection, it is not time to sell it, it is time to hold it and watch the prices go up. These old cards are very bulk. Um, until recently, this was a $1 card and it's now $50. There actually is, I talked to one of my friends who is a bigger dealer on TCG Player. He's moving these. So the question of who's buying them and what's going on, people are actually buying these cards from Legends, The Dark, and we'll see later Fallen Empires. There might be, my belief, this is kind of out there, is people feel good about Magic. Magic Digital Next with the Magic Arenas came out. It was kind of like Hearthstone, which is not bad, right? Hearthstone is a very popular game, and it will make streaming Magic or making Magic gameplay videos a lot easier to do, which will be great for all content creators. And the more content creators making the Magic and promoting it without getting paid, the better it will be. So next, Rainbow Veil, vale, which is from Fallen Empires. And this one is interesting because Fallen Empires is not a set I associate with value in any sense. But here we go. It is a beautiful card. I could see why some people would want it. Uh, you can add any mana of any color in the group hug deck. You can give the land to someone else. They can give it to someone else. They can pass it to their opponent at the end of turn. And it is gorgeous artwork. I do not remember playing this when Fallen Empires, I, I feel like I took a break. Luckily for me, right, for Magic. But uh, overall, the set is very terrible. And him to Torok is the best card, but it's uh, not that valuable. So Fallen Empires now has a card over $4. Next, Maelstrom Nexus. So I will be the first one to tell you I own many copies of this card. I'm going to hold them. Could it be reprinted in Iconic Masters or 25th Anniversary? Yes. But I like the little, I like the graph, right? The graph is nice and steady growth. A little spike here, a little spike there, but it's relatively... Nice and steady. It's not anything particularly... It's not something that I would say is abnormal. It's just a card being played and it is getting older and older in time. Five colors being something kind of interesting in the dragon deck. But Maelstrom Nexus, something that I knew. When you look at the card and you say to yourself, huh, is this going to be something people want to play in EDH? The answer is yes. Then you buy it. You can trade it all day. Right now, it is incredibly liquid for a card. It's a fun card to have. Five colors is in style now. You never know what the meta is going to bring you. So just pick strong, unique cards, and eventually they will, they will be in meta. Stag, I own... I want to say one or two of these. I don't know. I made a video. I, I own at least one or two of these. And Stag is now $29 from the low, low price of $2. Stag is not bad. I mean, it's probably one of the better legend cards that have been going up in price. It produces six power, eight toughness for six, which back in the day is not bad. So overall, legends... Any Legends card will eventually spike. I'm almost certain of this, no matter how bad it is, especially if it's on the reserve list, it will spike. Any Dark, meh, I don't know, Dark is kind of still out there. I would say Legends, Alpha, Beta, Unlimited has been seeing a lot of price movement. Collector's Edition has been seeing a lot of price movement. It's wild, right? I have not, never seen so many spikes all, like, you could and I have, make a video every single day about a new batch of cards that just has come from $2 to $20. Even this card, which is a common, it's called Flying Men. For one blue, it is a 1-1 one, one Flying Men. Oh, man. Is it? Oh, it's men, so it's more than one, but in the picture, there's, there's only one. That's honestly... <laughs> 
$13. My, mm, yeah, it's not a storm crow because storm crow can eat this, so it'll cost one more. But it just shows you how crazy everything is. And I talked to my friend, and he's actually selling these cards. Like, he's selling them for not for like $13, but he's selling them at you know, five and seven and nine incrementally, he's selling more and more of them. And there is a market out there. Uh, I didn't know if the market was real, but I can confirm from talking with he sells a lot thousands of cards. I think he does three to $5,000 a month in singles, but they're like, kind of older singles. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. He's saying that his uh, business has gone up a ton. So that means I need to head off to the flea market, pick up some more bulk. But the problem is, like, I think they know. Because I'm not, I have not been given any, like, legends or any of that type of stuff for a while. I have some of it but from the flea market, but I have not had it in a while. And I don't know why is that the case if I'm, if I'm getting unlucky or if they have just decided to sell that in a different. So they have various levels of bulk. And the store owner has figured out via ex probably experimenting and watching my videos that some of this stuff is actually worth a lot of money. Or not worth a lot of money, but it's worth more than he's trying to sell it for. And he has uh, different levels of, he has packs, he has fat packs, and now he, he has 500 count boxes. There's 1,000 count boxes, the bigger ones. And then he has 5,000 count boxes. Yeah, you heard me right. You can now buy 5,000 cards from the flea market and a random assortment. It's getting wild. I mean, if anyone were to benefit from these spikes, it would be him. So he probably took out all the legends, antiquities, and all those cards. So he knows legends is valuable. He knows that little legend symbol is quite valuable. And he knows that black border alpha beta is valuable but sometimes he gets confused what that means uh, for instance the dark some of the dark is really hard to tell that it's not alpha beta for him anyway moving on to five colors we have prismatic omen i remember that when this card was pennies just pennies you can see from june 12 or june 2012 maybe it was like five dollars it looks like a little less than five dollars absolutely sick right like the fact that some as long as the card that you are specking on has not been reprinted it's gambling so when people tell you mtg finance is skill especially if it's non-reserved cards it's not really skill right because they can always reprint your quote speculation the best example i have of this is when all the mtg financiers got together and they decided to buy the seance there was the seance guy who was paying people to burn seances from, uh, from China Fireball, you would set your seance in fire and then you would snap a picture. Then he later offered some ridiculous amount where the only person who would make more money than you is the person who won a pro tour. But if you finish in second place, you actually would be make more money from Bitcoins, uh, him giving you Bitcoins for showing off seance. Then they said, blank you, we're gonna reprint seance. And that was the end of Seance. No one's talking about Seance anymore. There's too many copies of it out there, right? No one's saying, oh, we should all invest in Seance again. Let's promote Seance. The Seance guy has failed. No amount of promotion can save you from reprint because let's say somehow he brings Seance to over a dollar again, which is aggressive. They're just going to reprint it again. <laughs> that was, when they reprinted Seance, I just laugh so hard because that has to be the biggest troll ever. But that being said, they probably, if they're angry at me and they watch my video and they know Philia is my favorite card, they can reprint her, right? And I would be like, oh, damn, they say on to me. So that's the new terminology I'm going to say. Let's assume that you collect a lot of cards and they reprint the card or in my in one instance, like Prophet Krufix, they ban the card outright from EDH, which is pretty much uh, reprinting it in terms of demand supply we will call that seancing you have been seanced and i hope that picks up because there would be nothing that makes them more mad than that right like imagine a group of uh, 
quote, MTG investors getting together, determining what a good card to speculate on is, and they somehow decide it's Seance. They each buy 500 copies of Seance, they start paying people to burn Seances and play at the Pro Tour by giving them Bitcoins. And then, you know, Seance price was over a dollar at one point. And then, bam, reprint. No one's talking about Seance anymore. <laughs> Although it was interesting, right? I mean, every time Reddit would have a post about the Seance guy and he became kind of uh, a figure in MTG Finance. Do not do not compare this to Norway. It's totally different, right? <laughs> anyway, bye guys.